So we are going to be in Ephesians this morning. You know, I've been thinking about battles and, and, and fightings and war. I love war movies, <laughs> especially the ancient movies, you know, these warriors who are really, if they make a commitment to go out there for, for a fight, it's a real fight. It's not just an idea of, you know, I think I can go out and perhaps I can do something with my life out in the field. These are people who are making a commitment that whatever would come out of this, I am willing to take the challenge. <laughs> I am willing to go fight. And if I die, it is a honorable death, right? And many people are not like that. You know, we, we like to play safe. We like to, you know... Engage in things that will, you know, there will be a very big distance so that we, we don't lose life. But apparently those who think they, they will protect their lives for their own reasons, they lose it too quickly. Those who will go out and do stuff, in a way they will be protected. And... When the Apostle Paul is telling us to put on the whole armor of God, he wants us to get the idea from these ancient warriors how they would prepare themselves for war. The dedication they would have to follow their leaders. If the, the commander say, we go this direction all of them, regardless whether they feel it or they don't feel it, they're going to go and fight. And so this morning, I have a question for you. I know perhaps the Lord has called you into a certain battle. The question is, are you willing to go and fight? Are you willing to go? And do you have the resources that are needed for you to go and fight? Or we we'll say, maybe, Lord, I need, to be, I need to be groomed more and more. I need to get these things in order. I need to do one, two, three, four, five things before I think of going out and fighting a battle. We are going to read a few verses here. If, in chapter 6 of Ephesians, from verses 10, you know, Paul brings a very holistic way for us to think about things. He's talk about uh, how we ought to relate with one another, husband and wife, uh, servants and their masters, and also children and their parents. And now this last part from verses 10, he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So he's drawing our attention to the Lord and his strength. In Exodus, the Bible tells us that the, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. He fights our battles. You know, the, the good thing with the Lord is that when he fights the battles, he gives us the victory. So we, we don't got to do it. He's just bringing us to partake of this wonderful um, victory. And he's saying, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Let all your strength, everything that you have, be drawn from the Lord. 
If you're going to be strong in your own self, you can be beat up. You will not, you, well, well, you may win the battle today and then tomorrow you lose it. Because you're depending on your own strength to fight this kind of battle. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the vials of the enemy. Be strong in the Lord. And the, the whole armor that is mentioning here includes the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword of the Spirit, and the gospel of peace. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the vice of the devil. For we do not wrestle against the flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having guarded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayers. Now Paul is calling us to stand, but also he's helping us to know how we ought to stand. Maybe, you know, we, we have images. We have seen all this. We have gone through this many times. But I think we need to remind ourselves because as a people, we forget too soon. We look at the mirror, and as soon as we are out, we forget. Is it possible to forget how your hair looks like? Is it possible? Maybe, because we want to confirm every time, right? Even when you're walking down the street. And, you know, we have this building with glass doors or windows like I still got it. <laughs> we just want to check it out. We just want to be sure about ourselves. <laughs> we are so much full of ourselves, looking at ourselves and, you know, admiring ourselves. And, man, isn't it pathetic at times to just sitting back and thinking about what you were thinking about. It is just you, you, and yourself. <laughs> You're not thinking about in people. Even when you look at a group photo, right? <laughs> you look at a group photo, who do you want to find first? If, if you don't look nice on that photo, then the whole thing is bad. If you look nice in the photos, like, send me that. <laughs> I want to keep it because I look nice. We have a problem, friends. Not thinking about what the Lord has done for us. Just busy, busy thinking about ourselves. Because we are so full of ourselves. And even sometimes when people say, you know, I, I want to speak from my heart. 
You, you, you got to be careful what you want to say. But anyways, Paul is telling us to get the whole armor of God. Because there's a battle. Because there's something going on. Even when we don't see it with our eyes, we don't feel it at times. But the truth is, there's a battle going on. In the spiritual realm, there is a battle going on. And we fight daily. You remember Daniel in Daniel chapter 10? Praying and praying and praying. The answer is released, but he, he's not interacting with it yet because there the are principalities and powers in the heavenly places. And the enemy knows for sure, as we've been told here in the pulpit, that God did not create hell for people, but people will end up in there. It was made for Satan and his angel, the fallen angels. But the enemy doesn't want to go there alone. He wants to drag people with him. And so you will find yourself, you know, you fall short of the glory of God. You're in sin today. And you feel condemned and you're remorseful about it. And you know what the enemy will do? Because he knows that God hates sin. And what he does is reminding you of what you did. God hates sin, right? But you did sin. So he wants you to be condemned so that you will continue in your sin. Continue being broken. Continue living in that sin. That is what he wants for people. But Paul says, get the helmet of salvation. You know, you, you can be prepared in every challenge by making sure that you are a person sharing God's truth. This includes sharing the gospel news about our Lord Jesus Christ why you believe in him, what is done for you. Has the Lord done things to you? Of course I know he has done things. He's done wonderful things to me. And Paul is saying, as we are sharing this gospel, we are continuing to stand firm in Christ because we are sharing. Have you noticed that the more you do something, the more you get more acquainted with it, right? The more you practice something, the more you become good at it. Whether it's a sport, whether it's public speaking, whether it's playing music, whether it's whatever it is. You become better at it when you practice. The more you share the gospel with people, the more you get more comfortable. You know, we have a group that goes out every week, Wednesday and Friday, to share the gospel with people in the street. When they first began, it was like, hey, well, what am I going to say to people? Well, what if they don't, you know, listen to me? What if they just kick me out? What ifs? We have a lot of what ifs. What if, what ifs? They began to be on fire. you can hear me. <laughs> we wonder 
When we talk to people, we, how will they respond? You know what God told Moses? These people, they have not rejected you. They have rejected me. I'm their leader, but they, they have seen what is happening with the nations. They want a king. And these are the things that are going to happen to them. They're going to be taxed heavily. They're going to pay a lot of taxes. Their daughters would go and be, you know, they'll be employed in the, in the palace and be cooking. Their sons will be the guards. And all these things are mentioned to warn them, but they say, we want it anyways. We don't want God to lead us. We want to lead ourselves. We want a man. And God said, they have not rejected you. They have rejected me. You will share the gospel. Perhaps many will reject the gospel message. Some will accept it. But what a joy to share what God has done in your life. You know, you, you, that is the truth. What is done cannot be edited. <laughs> it is what it is. The Lord saved me. I was a drunk. I was a smoker. I was a horrible person. The Lord had mercy on me. You can't say, well, he just had mercy on you because you did this, you did this. There was nothing in me that could have drawn him. But he came for me. He died. You know the apostle Peter, in 1 Peter 2, he said that we live, we should live such good lives that though they would accuse you of wrongdoings, they would see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly father. That means your testimony would stand out. They say, well, this, he's not just saying it. He's living it. That is the truth. He said, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you the reason of this hope that you have. The question is, the believer, do you have hope? Are you hopeful? Jesus knew ahead of time that we would be afraid. And in his teachings and talking to the disciples, say, do not be afraid. For where I am and where I'm going, you will be also giving you hope. If it were not so, I couldn't have said it. I want you to be motivated. I want you to be encouraged. So friends, get the helmet of salvation in place. And then he talks about the shield of faith. Say, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But against the principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. It's above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench, to stop all the fiery darts of the wicked one. In other words, what the enemy does, he's busy, he's at work, just shooting, shooting at God's people. Arrows are released every time, every day. If we don't have the shield of faith, it will drive through us every time. Shield of faith. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that 
has overcome the world, and that is our faith. As John writes in 1 John chapter 4, verses 5, that we have victory in Christ because of faith. We have victory in Christ. The shield, we've been shielded. You know, having it actually indicates that there's a battle going on. There's something happening that we need or we ought to stand against every time. It says there in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It is evidently there. We can just see it with our eyes. But then, when we're walking with the Lord, when we read God's word, there are places that will tell us not to go. There are things he will warn us about because he knows if we drive down that road, we are going to get finished. If we go down that road, the enemy will devour us. And so he's calling us to have discernment, to know. For we walk by faith, not by sight. It says in Second Samuel, 22, 31. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. God is a shield for everyone who trusts in him. Are you going to abide in him? Then you're going to have a shield with you. That is our God. He also prepared for himself instruments of death. He makes arrows into the fiery shafts. You know, the enemy is busy shooting at you. Shooting, shooting. But if the Lord is our strong tower, if the Lord is our protection, whom shall I fear? I will not fear what Men can do to me if the Lord is my strength, if the Lord is my shield. He goes ahead and to speak about the breastplate of righteousness. In Isaiah 59, the Lord puts on righteousness as a breastplate. Plate and goes to battle against injustice and corruption, restoring peace and order around the earth. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness means I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live. In the flesh, I live it by faith in the Son of God. So that whatever comes in me, I know I'm not alone. He is with me. I no longer, I'm a dead man. I no longer live, but Christ in me. By faith. Been crucified. With Christ. Another question is, have you been crucified with Christ? Have you forsaken all these things and followed Jesus Christ? Do you recognize him as your Lord and Savior? Is he your Lord?
do right. It says in Leviticus, you shall not, you shall do no injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, nor honor the personnel of the mighty. In righteousness, you shall judge your neighbor. In righteousness. God has spoken this over and over and over and over. And you know, we basically don't have the capacity to do right if the righteousness we have is not of Christ. In Isaiah, it says that our righteousness is as filthy rugs. <laughs> Even in your very best day, you're wrong. <laughs> Even in your best, you're not able to earn your way. So we got to depend on God. We got to depend on Him. For in, in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as is it written in Romans 1 17, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. It goes on to speak about the belt of truth. Stand therefore, having guarded your waist with truth. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you want to know the truth, know Jesus Christ. Apart from him, there's no truth. He is the truth. He is the life. These warriors whether the ones we have seen or even just the, the regular police with shotguns. You know where they keep them? Right here. It is safe, but also it's easy to pull it out for use. Stand therefore, having guarded your waist with truth. It is quite amazing that even when God is speaking to us, you remember when he was speaking to Job, he said, hey, stand up, belt up. I want to speak to you like a man. Have your belt ready. I want to speak to you. Have the truth ready with you at all times. Not one moment, not tomorrow, right now. Because Jesus said, I am the truth. So you want to have the truth with you? Strive every day to know Jesus. I know we're born again. I know we love the Lord. I know we do many things for the Lord. But still, we got to continue. we got to continue seeking his face so that he will reveal himself to us more and more. Now, having your conduct honorable amongst the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, by your good works, which they observe, they will be able to do what? To glorify our heavenly Father. 
how would you be able to do good things of the Lord without having him as your truth? It will be quite difficult. But then, that is the way we would be able to stand against Satan in this world, in these evil days, to have the truth with us. And also, the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. See, the gospel gives us the assurance that God is with us. Because I'm not going to speak about myself out there. I'm going to share the good news of Jesus Christ. What he's done before, what he's doing in my life, and what he's going to do. The sword of the Spirit. That is the word of God. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Believing in what? In the word of God. As we learned last week in Romans 9. Every other time when the enemy would tempt you, please go back and refer to God's word in every situation. You remember Jesus in the wilderness? You know, all he said was, it is written. It is written. It is written. He didn't say, in my opinion, <laughs> he didn't say that. He says, it is written. The written word of God. We have it. We got to leave it. We got to abide by it. It is written. Every situation, that is why it would be prideful as Pastor Josh has said it many times, if you think you will go about your day without reading your word and praying, you'll be a prideful person. Very prideful. You think you can handle the day without the Lord leading you? Then go try it. You, it will be a very miserable day. But think about it. When you read God's word, even when you don't see how you would apply it, situation will come around and the Holy Spirit will remind you of the word you have read and you'll be able to rightly apply it. You know, in, in the Gospel of John, it says that the Holy Spirit will remind you of the truth. I mean, how could you be reminded of the things you haven't read, you don't know? It is vitally important for us to study the Word of God so that we'll be able to apply it rightly in our lives. And then he talks about again the gospel of peace. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know, by getting the sword of the Spirit, by reading God's word, you're actually getting yourself ready with the gospel of peace. After it is a must in you, after you get it, you know what you need to do? You get out. You go. Jesus sent us. Say, go ye into the world. Preach the gospel. 
teaching them to observe the things I have taught you. So as you go there, you're going to teach people to observe the word of the Lord. To consider God's word in their daily lives. Consider it. The gospel of peace is the good news that now through the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we now have peace with God. Now we can go to God's throne of grace and confess our sins. And God the Father, through the Son, Jesus Christ, who forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have now the confidence to go through the throne room of God. The door is wide open. You know, according to 1 Thessalonians 5.13 and John 13 also, the Lord God wants us to live in peace and in unity with one another. The Lord our God is love. He's given us his joy and peace and wants us to know that we can have this and also share with other people. You don't get it and get stingy with it. You get it and you share it. And for those who have made it a point to always share, man, the Lord has graced them abundantly with the wisdom. They share it with people, God showers them with the wisdom. Gets out and the Lord fills it. The Lord fills it. The Lord fills it every other time. You'd be wondering, you know, why, why is this person always wise? You know, the things they say, how they conduct themselves, it's pretty different. You know how we know it? Because they walk with the Lord. They practice what they preach. They get a hold of God's word and they go and let it out to the people. Wisdom. So we have peace with God. If he's been merciful to us, then we ought to also go and share with other people. Have the gospel of peace. And you know, as you, you know, he says we prepare ourselves, he also going to say that also pray for me that I will have the boldness to speak the way I ought to. I want boldness. He's already been bold, we know that. He's still asking of it because there's always an, an element of fear. Men have been beaten so bad. They nearly left me for dead. They have done all these things. We get afraid, people. And you know how we can hold ourselves up? We can pray for one another. Pray for me. Wouldn't it be so wonderful for you to know that someone is praying for you and they're actually mentioning your name while they pray? Isn't that wonderful? Wouldn't you want to do the same? Also pray for people, mentioning them by name, saying, the Lord, please bless this person. Grant them wisdom. Lead them through. They are going through tough seasons. God be with them. Guide them. They are probably in a very dark season of their lives. Please show them your light. That would be wonderful. 
That would be wonderful. And it is my prayer, and probably also your prayer, and that our Heavenly Father would help us to put on this armor so that we can be able to stand against the schemes of Satan. For our struggles is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers that are in the heavenly places. The Lord is merciful. And he is calling us to be strong. He's calling us to be strong in service. Has the Lord called you to serve in, in, in any way? Maybe it's in your house. There is service in your house. There is service in the marketplaces. There is service here at church. Whatever the Lord has called you to, be strong in that service. Be strong in suffering. Because suffering comes our way. We don't apply for it. It shows up. But when it does come, the strength from the Lord would help us go through. And also strength when we are in the middle of this battle. The Lord has promised to be with us until the end of time. I know that at some point, every believer, you will or you must engage in a proper battle. Are you prepared for it? Are you prepared? Our duty is to take the whole armor, put it on, so that we'll be able to stand and to withstand the fiery darts of the enemy. I don't know what you need strength for this morning. Whatever you need strength for, the Lord will provide a means and ways as I bring the worship team to come. He's so merciful that he has given us his word and his spirit to lead us. He has called unto us to ask for wisdom for everyone who lacks it, for I know we all do. And he gives us protection also from the enemy. We know that the Lord is in control of everything. But I just don't know what is heavy in your heart this morning. Maybe it's your, an issue with your family. You need strength for it. You've been praying for your husband, your wife, your children, your colleagues. You need to go there in strength, but not your own. God's strength. He's able. We serve a God who is able to deliver us from all this situation that seems hard. And he's just waiting for us to say, hey, Lord, uh, actually, I'm not able to do this. I need your strength. I need your guidance. I need your spirit to lead me. Without you, this situation 
is not going to be possible. So, Lord, I need you. Maybe let's take a moment, a minute, and bring all those things to the Lord, those things that are so heavy to you, the things that you've been praying for. You know, sometimes the Lord would heal us instantly. Sometimes he will send us to the river to get the mud in our eyes to be healed. He is God. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. Maybe you prayed for it for a week, a month, years. The Lord knows it. Be rest assured that he knows it. Do you have any hope? Let it be upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you. We bless you for your word that is all-powerful. Your word that gives us light. Your word that has resurrected and bring us, uh, bring our dead bones to life. In our circumstances and in our situations, you, you know them all. We cannot hide anything from you. And I pray right now for people who are burdened with various issues, weights in our hearts, in our minds. We are troubled. I pray that through the strength that we receive from your word, that we'll be able to stand. Even when the enemy is throwing a lot of things to us, I pray that through your spirit we'll be able to stand. Those who are praying for their loved one to get born again, I pray that as your word has told us to be ready with the gospel of peace. I pray that you will open doors for us to do so. I pray that you will lead us even to those people that we don't know, but you know that they need you, that we'll be able to discern, we'll be able to know how to share the gospel with them. And God, we thank you. We bless you for blessing us, Lord. We are blessed abundantly. We have your peace because we are redeemed by your blood. Thank you, God. Everyone who needs you this morning, I pray that you would come to our rescue. Holy Spirit, I pray that you you be poured upon us, all of us, that we'll be able to do what you've called us to do. As we also serve you with our offering, as we have purpose in our hearts to give to you, I pray that it will give a glorifying percentage that your name will be glorified. So we bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.